micro salad. The question that I received the most after posting the Manafin video was how do I get the analog sticks working on my controller? Now I got the, the buttons and the D-pad working right, and that's all fine and dandy, but a lot of people asked how do I get the analog sticks working so I could play the more modern games on the PS1. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. Now this video only covers the controller setup of Manaf and doesn't actually cover the setup of Manaf in itself. So if you're wondering how to set it up, I suggest you click over to this video here. Okay, the first thing you want to do is go to your Manafin folder, the place where you extracted all the Manafin files and ran the executable to generate the config file. Most of you should know where that is. If you don't, you need to back up and check the Manafin setup video again. So first things first, I'm going to open the config file. Let's maximize this here. And we need to find two values that need to be changed. Now I already have these in focus here. This is going to be input device for virtual port 1. You should see this value here. This is an important value. And the second value we need to change is right below it, the access scale. So the first setting is telling Manafin what kind of control you have plugged in. It's not going to know automatically. And the default in the config is gamepad. Gamepad is fine, but that's referencing something more like um, NES controller. So what we're going to do is get rid of gamepad, and we're going to change it to dual shock that right there and that change is going to prompt a different set of uh, options in the controller setup that you'll see later on here second thing is the access scale it's at 1.00 right now I'm going to change this to 1.20 and the reason for doing so a specific note in the Manafin documentation about compatibility issues with the default scale what you're going to want to pay attention to on the bottom here is the range settings that it asks you to play around with. So a setting of 1.33 is recommended as a starting point. Smaller values such as 1.20, which works for me, may be sufficient to provide for more precise control. So that is the reason I'm doing that. So with those two values changed, I'm going to save. We can close the config file now. And I'm going to open up Steam. And there's Ape Escape. Now, if you're asking yourself, hey, how the hell did he get Ape Escape in Steam? Yeah, you'll want to click on this video here. If you think back to the PlayStation 1 days, the DualShock was not the first controller that was released with the PlayStation 1. It came with a standard gamepad type controller. It didn't have any sticks at all. So later on, when the DualShock came out, uh, they were starting to become more popular. Uh, Ape Escape is a game I, I remember fully supporting the DualShock controller. A lot of games only use the left stick, which is fine, but uh, Ape Escape uses both, and that's what we're going to test on. So I am going to fire up Ape Escape now. And you should see along the bottom that it recognizes our controller. DualShock 1 analog mode on. Just what we want. Again, Ape Escape. DualShock controller is required to play this game. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is press Alt, Shift, and the number 1 on my keyboard. You're going to see the config pop up on the bottom here. And now with the controller itself, I'm going to go up on the D-pad down on the D-pad, left, right, select, start, triangle, triangle again, X, square, circle, L1, left stick up. All right, so I'm trying to be as precise as possible here with the sticks. L3, right stick up, right stick down, right stick to the right, and analog toggle mode, which I'll just make spacebar. It's a button that no one ever used on the controller. Maybe once, maybe you hit it once and realized how useless it was, but all right. Let's see if this actually works. All right, 
Movement looks good. And using the net. Looks pretty good. I can remember hold the net and you spin around the circle. Uh, L3 to hit the ground and crawl. R3, did R3 do anything? I don't remember. But as you can see, all the controls working as expected here. So that's it. Controller set up, ready to go. Some closing notes here. If you ran into problems with the sticks just not seeming to, to work right, I would play around with the axis scale setting. Uh, twiddle the sticks around, click in L3, R3, and try the configuration again after that point, or quit Manaf and start it up, try it again. Uh, you can also try wiping the Manaf and config file and starting that process over again. Um, another thing, if your controller is not recognized, make sure you're not running it through any alternate programs. Uh, different mappings or anything like that and make sure it's plugged in through USB. Don't run wireless. I've always had problems trying to run a wireless controller with uh, an emulator like this. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please check out my other videos that I will link here and I will see you in the next video.